Let's move on to our first main topic today. And our first main topic today gets submitted to us by Geeky, Geeky Gator who writes, Hey, John and gang. The Playmobil movie debuted this weekend. Really? As much people probably wondered. As the third worst debut for a movie in 2000 plus theaters, making only $668,000. There have been many animated movie flops this year. Ugly Dolls, Missing Link, Wonder Park, Angry Birds 2, and now this. What draws families to see animated movies that don't have the Disney or Pixar stamp? All right, thanks a lot for sharing that, man. And first of all, it's an interesting observation. There have been many animated flops this year. I don't think it's the absence, though, of the Disney logo or Pixar logo. Those movies didn't look any good. Uh, Missing Link, turns out, was actually pretty damn good. But it didn't look good. The trailers weren't good. The trailers weren't interesting. Ugly Dolls did not look good. Nobody liked the first Angry Birds movie, and it didn't do all that great. Why did they think they should do another one? From all accounts, by the way, full disclosure, I passed on Angry Birds 2. I didn't go to watch it. From all accounts, it was a much better film than the first one, but it's too late. The people didn't like the last one. The marketing for that one was terrible. No one went out to see it. I, so I don't think this is a matter of, like, for instance, How to Train Your Dragon is neither Pixar, Disney, anything like that, but it looks magnificent and it's built a reputation of trust with its audience. I don't think it's a matter of that it needs to have the Disney or Pixar logos on them, although those help because they have built a reputation of trust with their audience that when you bring your families to see a Pixar film or a Disney film, you, most likely, are in for a good time. So they built that trust. But we've seen other successful animated films too. I think it's just a, a run of that these things just look terrible, as did Playmobil, and you're not wrong. Guys, we just witnessed history, this, or, or didn't witness history, as the case may be, this weekend, <clears throat> as Playmobil is now the actually the fourth lowest grossing wide release film of all time. Now, if you want to take the Saw 10th anniversary release out of the equation, you can, but it did get released in over 2,000 screens. So that's the thing. So the, the worst one, the worst opening weekend in history with over 2,000 screens was the Oogie Loves in the Big Balloon Adventure. I was intimately acquainted with that movie because my entertainment lawyer who represented me for my movie, The Anniversary, was also the, the representation for Oogie Loves and was one of the producers on Oogie Loves. So I went to a party, Rob. Uh, four months before that movie came out, I went to a big Oogie Loves party in Las Vegas in the Playboy suite at uh, the Palms Hotel, which tells you something about how in touch with their audience they were. <laughs> We're doing this kids' movie called The Oogie Loves, and we're going to have our party. Where? At the Playboy Suite at the Palms Hotel. Sure. <laughs> and you know what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but when you're talking about it being Oogie Loves, it doesn't sound something that's really appealing for adults to get involved in. Nope. No, sir, it does not, and nobody else got involved in it either. So that movie made $443,000. Uh, then a movie from 2008 that none of you remember, because none of you saw it, called Delgo. Then, of course, the Saw the re-release, the, the bad idea of a 10th anniversary release, they spent 10 times more money putting this back on over 2,000 screens than they made. So it made $650,000. Playmobil made $660,000. Not six million, <clears throat> not whatever, $660,000. By bounds, half, less than half of what Gem and the Holograms made <laughs> in its opening weekend with over 2,000 screens. So we have seen history now. We are seeing history in the making. And listen, I'll tell you what, it is difficult to release a movie on over 2,000 screens and make under a million dollars. It's only happened four times in history. And Playmobil becomes the fourth. Rob, as, as you look at this, <laughs> as you look at this, number one, the question about movies struggling Animated movies struggling, particularly this year. Is it because it doesn't have the Disney or Pixar logo? But then second of all, kind of a in-context reflection of the event that we just saw here, the fourth lowest opening weekend in history. How do you put all that into words? <laughs> well, here's the thing. You know, Lego is something that's ubiquitous. Every kid knows what that is. You, you talk Lego, it puts a smile on people's face faces with all of their 
their licensed things. There's Harry Potter Lego. There's Batman Lego. There's Star Wars Lego. There's all kinds of Legos. People love Lego. Like you were saying, the Lego movie couldn't be good, but people turned out to see it. Now you say Playmobil. Who knows what that is? My mom doesn't know what Playmobil is. My mom bought me Legos when I was a kid. I think just because one thing works doesn't necessarily mean immediately. I mean, kids aren't stupid. One day we're going to figure out that we should not infantilize kids. They're smarter than we know. And, you know, when you tell people there's a Playmobil movie coming out, I, I can't even see anybody getting really excited about that. I didn't even know this movie was opening, and I pay attention to this stuff. <laughs> and I like Playmobil. And it's like, who thought that was a good idea? I, I, I don't know. It, you know, they even got desperate, and they started getting they started getting theaters to agree that they realized nobody was coming, they weren't marketing it, and they got the theaters to even go out and promote $5 tickets for it. And they still only managed to get a little over 100,000 people to go see it. But what's amazing to me is that it got that far. That yeah. somebody, somebody said, hey, let's go do this. They didn't think about the fact that where in the cultural zeitgeist does Playmobil exist? Like, is there generations of kids that had it? I, I thought Playmobil stuff was cool, but it certainly wasn't ubiquitous the way Lego is. So it's not the same thing. Just because kids played with it doesn't mean it has that appeal. Right. And, and so... <laughs> And so that's not to say that you can't make an original movie, you know, but you do got to realize since we are starting with something that is not ubiquitous, as, as you point out, that is not a household name with with all of the movie going audience right now, you're going to have to market it and you're going to have to market it big. And they decided to cut bait and not even market it. And they kind of resigned themselves to going, you know what? This movie is a complete loss. We can't. We can at, we can sink another forty million in marketing into it, which is what this movie needs. This movie it didn't need a hundred million dollars worth of marketing. It needed a good forty million dollar marketing campaign. But they realized we're never going to make anywhere near that in the box office to even recoup the cost of marketing it. And this was really a movie that they just cut bait and realized this thing's a lost cause. We're not going to market it. We'll just hope that because it's a kids movie and we'll see if the theaters can give it a five dollar ticket price or whatever, that maybe we'll recoup something. But this is an unmitigated disaster. Did you read any reviews of it? Uh, yeah, I did. did. Was it was it poorly reviewed? It was poorly reviewed. See, what I don't understand is the way animated films are made. The reason Pixar is so successful is because they work the stories for years. And they develop them over time so they know what's good and what's bad. They already know way before the movie's done whether it's going to be great. And it's always going to be great because they spend the time. How do you make an animated movie that doesn't work? The process, the process lends itself to making sure if it's not working, you fix it early on in production. So yeah, it's but, baffling. But at the same time, I mean, it is difficult making a good movie. It's right. really hard to make no, a good movie. But I mean, this one was just how this thing ever came to be. I Because I think the only way you green light this movie in the first place is in advance knowing we are setting aside X amount of dollars for heavy, heavy marketing to, to raise awareness for this thing. And they didn't do that either. And it all came together in one disastrous perfect storm where it was a big mess. Guys, question is, we all knew Playmobil was going to do bad. Bottom four of all time bad? Even I didn't see that coming. Were you guys surprised by that? Jump on down to the comment section below and let me know what you guys think. All right.